We are back. The Ash Cash Show every Sunday, 1 p.m. WACR 90.3 FM, New York, the voice of Harlem. With Ash Cash and Mr. Shima Jones. All right, so we have an exciting guest with us today. We have Jay Morrison, a.k.a. Jay, Mr. Real Estate. Uh, he's a successful real estate investor, celebrity realtor, author, TV personality, entrepreneur, social activist, and the CEO and founder of the Jay Morrison brand and the Jay Morrison Academy, an online real estate school and, uh, and mentorship program. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jay Mr. Real Estate. What's up, brother? I'm just happy to be here, you know? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Harlem. The, well, right? The voice of Harlem, W-A-C-R. We in the building. Um, so, you know, for those who don't know, because we, cause we, go, we going right in. Right. We're going Let's right go. in. Let's but go. but before, you know, for, the, for those who don't know, tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, man. Uh, first and foremost, uh, happy Sunday, everyone. And uh, Ash, appreciate you for the for the invite, bro. We, we always trying to kick it, probably yes, get video, get content together. Yes, sir. Uh, pleasure to meet your co-host as well. Nice um, you. <laughs> and uh, this is an exciting show. So, yeah, about me, though, um, current day, I mean, I don't even know where to start. My story's so long, but, I mean, you know, I, I came from the hood in Jersey. Um, you know, grew up in poverty, welfare kid, free lunch at school, you know, high school dropped out at 16. Um you know, suffered a lot of adversity and, and figured out that the dope game was going to be my way out the hood mm -hmm. and, and start selling drugs early and had a lot of early success. Uh, end up taking my, 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 my trafficking ring on the road. I was had a connect here in New York on 138th and Broadway and I would make close trips. too. So like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, know, like, like, right? like, 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 yeah. like, yeah. right yeah. the yeah. yeah. you know, so, but I would take my trips to Baltimore, take my, take my trips to Nebraska, uh, was moving work, moving weight and actually on Riverside Ave here in New York. I was coming to take a, a trip. I got copped a quarter key of coke and I had a loaded gun with me and a, and a popo pulled up on me. Okay. And I would end up, uh, four days after I turned 18, I would end up in Rikers Island facing three years of life in prison wow. uh, for that charge. And uh, we, we would go through the system a couple of times, end up serving two and a half years in prison in seven different prisons, a bunch of uh, moving around and and kept bumping my head and figuring that, you know, I was, I was gonna get rich or die trying in the streets, is what mm -hmm. I thought. Mm -hmm. And then I had a wake up call at 25 that um, I could use my same charisma, my same talent, my same mathematical skills and marketing skills, yep. uh, my superpowers as I call them, I use my same superpowers for good. If I put all that energy and attention into real estate or a different career, real estate was the one I chose that I would do well. And so I started in the mortgage industry as a loan officer. I worked my way to branch manager and would manage two branches and got a real estate license in, uh, you know, in between. Mm -hmm. And would buy my first house at 25 and three by 26, six by 27, and make my first million in real estate by 28. Um, I would take that success on to a national level, got notarized by BET, and then I did a, a Rock Aware campaign, a national campaign with them, and uh, would go on to NBC as a real estate expert for the Today Show and, and a celebrity realtor for Open House NYC with a nice handful of celebrity clients. And we'll, we'll keep investing and wholesaling and flipping and buying and um, started to get off of me and off of self and, and, and really want to see how can I help empower my community and do something bigger than just me, right? So we always... Uh, are, are so blown away by our own personal success and I was mm -hmm. and, and I actually you know had to get humbled from my personal success and realize that life is about legacy it ain't about you know just what you can make yep so um, as I got into my, my legacy campaigns I call it mm -hmm. um, you know and writing my book hip-hop to homeowners I would go out, out to high schools and, and teach kids about financial literacy about credit about you know, all kinds of stuff. that's how you and I met yep right doing that program doing a, um, a started a, a community campaign called YMC young minds can and we did a mentoring weekend and Ash came and uh, you know, from there, I just really been on a strong, I, I figured that God brought me from poverty and prison, um, not just for me to be rich, yep. but for me to be rich in life and see how I can give back to our community. Absolutely. Right. So uh, that's just my purpose. And, and it's, it's keep elevating. I keep getting new wake up calls yep. and figuring out that it's, more, it's, it's, it's a lot to it. Right. I know we're going to dig into a lot yep, of it, yep, but yep, just, yep. just for people, just, I guess a, a short synopsis of me is just like, I'm just a real dude really from, from from the streets who's cleaned up really well and has dominated uh, to some degree in corporate America. Yep. And I'm just hell bent on giving back and bringing my community up bottom line. No, absolutely, absolutely. And, and yeah, you are Mr. Real Estate though, right? Yeah, so like, yeah, yeah. multi-millionaire by 30, like, you know, you talk about the first million, but we, you know, there, there, there was, there's others, you know? Right, right, I'm, I'm yeah. doing numbers, I'm doing yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so talk to us, you know, but, but before we jump, cause I, cause I got, you know, I want to talk, I want to talk about black economic power. Like I want to talk about right, reparations. Right, right. I want to talk about, you know, the good stuff. And if you have questions, you could call us in 212-650-6903. But talk to us about real estate specifically, um, how, you know, how does real estate help in the wealth building process? 
Okay, yeah, real estate is so essential mm -hmm. uh, in the wealth building process because it forces you to do a few things, right? Even just the process of purchasing your first house, right? That first kind of goal for a lot of people is to be a homeowner. Mm -hmm. So that makes you have to review your credit. A lot of us are scared to even look at our credit right, and they don't right. even want to know what that looks like, right? Mm -hmm. So I would say probably 50% of the black community don't own real estate because of fear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fear to actually diagnose their financial state, right? Look at their budget, mm -hmm. look at their credit, fix those things if needed to be fixed. And then the fear of responsibility. The fact that Owning a home, people say, oh, I don't want to own a home. I don't want to deal with the, the leaky faucet. I don't want to deal with the, what if the heater goes or what if the... So you rather rent, pay another man or woman rent money and get their family rich and mm -hmm. build a legacy for them all because of the fear of responsibility right. of a leaky faucet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? But when, when if the faucet leaks anyway and your landlord will get to you, you got to fix it anyway. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. So um, real estate helps you, one, it creates financial responsibility, right? And, and that, that quest to own a home. Um, but then also there's tax breaks in owning real estate. Mm -hmm. um, there's cash flow in real estate. If you do my model, which is buy you know, your first property, I recommend a lot, especially young people, mm -hmm. to buy a duplex. Live in one side, rent the other one out. Mm -hmm. That way you're living for free or for cheap, mm -hmm. right? So um, then you can move on to another property and rent both of those out mm -hmm. and then have cash flow coming in, right? Mm -hmm. So cash flow is important. And then the, the appreciation of the property. So we're, you know, in our culture, we buy a lot of clothes, we buy a lot of jewelry, a lot of cars. That, that stuff is cool to us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All those things go down in value. They, they appreciate, as we know. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So when you buy property, and I don't care about up and down markets and all that kind of stuff. No matter what, because of supply and demand and the fact that there's only so much land on earth. Yep. And there's people always being made and living longer and new medicines and everything else. The earth will continue to get populated, but the land will uh, mass stays the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So therefore, whoever owns the most land will win, and land and, and, and real estate will always go up in value over time. Mm -hmm. Even Detroit, right? So right. everybody says like Detroit, you get a house for two dollars. Right. Right. But one day, yeah. I don't care if it's three hundred years from now. Yeah. One day, Detroit real estate will definitely. Go there were some value. brownstones in Harlem for a dollar. Right. That'll that worth exactly. That'll <laughs> worth millions yes, now. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So 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 the real estate is just essential to and. We use the word real estate and it kind of desensitizes what it really is. It's really land, mm -hmm. yeah. right? It's the property on the land. It's the mineral rights under the land, right? Because yeah. people have made millions in real estate with no property on it just from oil mm -hmm. yeah. or from agriculture, mm -hmm. right? The, the, the cotton fields is what how Mississippi blew up in right. the South through, mm -hmm. our, through, our, through our labor, through yeah. labor our ancestors, yeah. right? But mm -hmm. land, and you also own the air rights above the land. Mm -hmm. If you look at downtown Manhattan and everywhere else in these major cities, mm -hmm. people buy airspace yeah. so they can build up these skyscrapers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So not only do you own real estate, do you own just the, the building, you own the mineral right, rights below the building and the air rights above the building. Yep. That's your space. And that's the power. Yep. Mm -hmm. Wow. 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 And, and, and then so, you know, and, and I know um, through through research and, and things of that nature, um, there there were systematic ways that kept us, you know, Af you know African-Americans, black and Latinos, um, uh, specifically African-Americans, to mm -hmm. um, away from home ownership. Like there were actually laws on the books that that you couldn't lend to an African American, and then um, later on, the government said, "All right, you know what? Go ahead. You could, you know, you could, uh, you know, black people could buy property now." Right. Um, and and because because of that, you know, but by, by that time, the prop, you know, you know, everybody else got the land, and then we couldn't right. really well, afford them. Well, you know? well they kind of needed black people to buy property because if all the whites owned the property, right? Right. And only way for them to cash out was to be able to sell to somebody. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> when you think about it. When, when 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 the enslavement of, of the African uh, the Africans ended right here in America, yep. there were four million slaves or, or former slaves at that point. Yep. Four million black people, yep. Africans here in America who had nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. yep. Right, slavery's over. Right, we weren't free. Just so everyone knows, we weren't mm -hmm. free. Yep. We were free from the enslavement, but yep. we weren't free from the same kidnappers that kidnapped us from Africa. All right, so talk, right, talk right, to me about right, that, though. Talk to me. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Right, right, we go, we get in there, we get in there, we get in there, we get in there. Right, right, right. So when you think about it, though, right? So I, I was downtown yesterday, right? I was, I was in Soho, and I'm, and I'm around. And listen, I'm the most non-racist person in the world, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, but I, I just, I'm, I'm a, I'm a student of, of the world. I'm a student. I, I like, I like just digesting things, right? I'm reading this great book called Conquer and Conquest, and I don't believe in white supremacy. Mm -hmm. I call it is European supremacy, mm. right? It's not about a color. It's how it happens that the Europeans are white, yep. right? So I was down Soho, and it's like you know, it's like me and like three other people that are down there that are black, and the rest are are white people, Europeans, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I was like, man, they got a super duper head start, mm -hmm. right? I'm just like, I'm just di digesting it, mm -hmm. and thinking about it. When you re you really think about the state of Black America, right? Us as far as wealth, as far as poverty, as far as our condition, and all those things, those that that kind of 
we're trying to build up in our community and things we talk mm -hmm. about, you know, behind closed doors and the open forums or whatever. When you think about it, a lot of it has to do with the start we got. Mm -hmm. That start that that the English settlers, the European settlers mm -hmm. here in America mm -hmm. who were had us enslaved for about 250 plus years, mm -hmm. that start they got from just not the slavery component, but even mm -hmm. post-slavery, mm -hmm. where we couldn't own, but they could own everything, right. they got to buy up Manhattan early. Right. Yes. They got to buy up Chicago early, Miami mm -hmm. early. Right. right. They got to do that early. And then having that power of all the mineral rights, all the air rights, all the land and all the rents and all the, man, they went in. Right. So, so right. for us, we talk about, you know, while we're poor, yes, yes, there's things we have to do to be a better, you know, for ourselves, right? So mm -hmm. I'm always about self-empowerment and not, you know, blaming anyone, mm -hmm. but just looking at the reality of the situation. If you look at the economic condition, even the spiritual, emotional, and physical mm -hmm. condition of black people today, it directly relates, it directly correlated to our experience here in America. Yeah. It was, it was, Definitely. And that just goes back to when you were speaking about people not have wanting to take responsibility. You know, it's a mind thing. If your grandmother and her mother and her mother didn't own a home, mentally you are not designed you know, to actually say, I'm going to buy a home because the belief system isn't even there. Right. So when you go back to all of these things that have happened um, in our society, it's so much to do with your mental and yep. your mentality right. and your perspective and what you've seen. But yep. when you educate yourself and when you step outside of your boundaries, you get to see that, hold on, I can do this too. Right. You know, Correct. it's possible. So that financial literacy, yep. you know, understanding air rights. Like, I own air, right, but, right, like, right, really? Right, yeah. But it's possible. Yeah. You know, even myself, I was thinking about hunger, and I was like, if you can sell food, you can sell anything. Yeah. Because food was just there at one point, you mm -hmm. know, growing from the trees. Right. But people purchased it, yeah. and they're reselling it. Right. So it's like, you can literally sell anything. Right. right. <laughs> I mean, we buy water. We, we buy right, water. Right, right. Like, yes. really and then it gets to the point, mentally, it's like, yeah. I can't drink the faucet. You know yeah, you was drinking yeah, from exactly. that fire hydrant. Right, exactly, exactly. Don't just let, act it, just like let that. it run 30 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yes. so 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 can we can we jump into to your thoughts on reparations, man? Like let's talk let's talk about that for a second because I you know to, to be honest, you know you know I grew up I grew up in Harlem, so you know in in, in the eighties and nineties five percenters, um, there was a lot you know Israelites, a lot of talk about reparations and you know um, coming up. It was it was too intense, right? So I was right. like, whoa, whoa, mm -hmm. reparations. I'm like, nah, go back to Africa with that, and all, you know, and right. and now that, that's the the majority of of what the thought process was. Um, but now, you know, now now when when people talk, you know, you know, you and I have had conversations about it, and right. um, you know, my, my perspective is a little different. So I, I would love to hear your right. perspective on reparations, the well, forty acres in the mule. Right, right. Ash, and that, that, was, that was a great point you made. Uh, and that's what I'm excited, right, about my chance to to divulge this and start this conversation. Yeah. Is that it's always been had by the militant in our community, the revolutionaries, mm -hmm. like I said, the, the Israelites with the Israelite garb, and it's just yeah. like, all right, now I'm doing this swagged out. Like, yeah. We're gonna we're, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. we're gonna talk about reparations, we're gonna talk about this swagged out, but right. it all makes sense. Mm -hmm. So first of all, I'll, t I'll, I'll tackle that forty acres in the mule, right? Mm -hmm. The 40 acres and a mule thing was not for all black people, mm -hmm. right? That was a law that Abraham Lincoln wrote in the place for blacks that were volunteer to fight for the Union in the Civil War. Okay. And they were supposed to be compensated with land and mules or, you know, compensation mm -hmm. for their, their fighting with the Union, right? Um, Abraham Lincoln then got assassinated, and I think Andrew Johnson came into office at that point, and then he vetoed that law. He was like, nah. <laughs> and then some blacks who did get land, they did get land, but think about it. When slavery... The enslavement of blacks ended, right? And 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 the South had, you know, got beaten. The, the, the North then moved out of the South. Mm -hmm. But the South, so blacks who were freed as owned land, there was no protection for them mm -hmm. from the same Southern people who had that hostility towards them. That's when the KKK was formed. Yep. And they would just come and take our land. Mm -hmm. That's it. We're going to burn this down. We're yep. going to run you off. And now it's our land. Yep. Or because the sheriff of the town is a KKK member or a Confederate mm -hmm. uh, alumni. Yep. They'll put a debt on a black person back then and say, you owe us $300, and until you pay it, this land is ours. Or if yeah. you don't pay it, we're foreclosing on our land. Mm -hmm. And then the, or you do pay it, they'll add some more onto it. Mm -hmm. And it was just really, it was like, whatever. So um, <laughs> it, it, it was a bad situation for us. So, yeah, so, so 40, 40 acres of mule thing is not, you know, that's not reparations, right? Yeah. So that, so my, my whole take on reparations was my first, my first thought of it was Dave Chappelle, when he did the reparation skit, yep. and it was blacks buying Cadillac, Escalades, yeah. and gold chains. Yeah, right. So to me, it always is a joke too. You know what I'm right, saying? Right, like right, even right. Kanye, I'm like, come on, man. Right. Like so that's, that's all you know about it. But the reality of it is, is that 
it's reparations are due when there's human right human rights violations, okay. right? Um, there's there's reparation laws in world court, and they have been executed by America for the Japanese Americans when they were um, imprisoned here in America during World War II. They mm -hmm. got their uh, descendants got reparations. Um, the Native Americans got land, territory, tax breaks, and all type of other mm -hmm. reparations as well. Um, the Germans got or Israel got reparations for the Jews in Israel, 1.5 billion to date, wow. 150 million still, like t like two years ago for the Jewish. 12 year Holocaust. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's funny how we always say slavery, right? It's another word that's just so commonly used. But yo, we, we suffered a Holocaust. We right. suffered mm -hmm. a 250 year Holocaust of, of murder, right. of trauma, of mm -hmm. treatment. Did you know that when the slaves would be on the ships and coming off the ships, they would find the pregnant women on the ships? They would cut them open in front of everybody. They would hang them upside down, cut them open, take the fetus out of the woman. Put it on the ground in front of everybody and stop out the fetus. If anyone will make a noise or make any kind of reaction, to kill that person. Oh, wow. They made us desensitized towards black life. Mm -hmm. And that's how they started to control us with fear from the beginning, mm -hmm. right? So, anyway, going into the reparations conversation, that trauma is what I'm speaking of, right? Yep. Imagine that mental trauma yep. from that. Imagine mm -hmm. mental trauma. You just saying that right now just messed me up a little bit for a few seconds. I'm like, whoa, hold on. Like, right. I wouldn't think about those yeah. things yeah. being planted within that spirit, that yeah. human spirit that yeah. carries on, it's, we, you know, I, I, I always say, I'm not dealing with my issues. Right. I'm dealing with the issues of my ancestors. The vestiges. Right? It's yeah. vestiges yeah. of slavery. It's, yes. the, it's the residuals. It's the results. So yes. that happens for 250 years. Imagine your best friend's like, bro, I'm out of here, Ash. I'm going to run away. Yep. Jay runs away right from the master. Yep. Jay come back, his foot missing now. Mm -hmm. They cut his foot off. They whip his back. They... Now you're like, man, imagine how you feel now. Right. Mm -hmm. Now you're telling your kids, like, don't you dare ever think about right. running away. You know what I'm saying? It's right. like, yeah. it's just so much. So so what happens when you when you hurt your elbow? What happens when you hurt your knee? What do you do? You go to a doctor, right? You right. get physical therapy. Yep. Mm -hmm. So reparations to me, before we, even eat, before we even get the money, reparations to me, you have to give us reparations and repair to help restore us to be a whole people mm -hmm. in regards to mental health as well, mm -hmm. yep. right? Mm -hmm. Not to mention land and finances, all those kind of things. But before, if we reverse just a couple steps, the first uh, most important thing for us as a people is to be self-determined, is to mm -hmm. actually understand our state here in America, right? Yep, yep. And, and, and talking to elders about why we haven't received reparations is because we've been to court several times for reparations, and every judge has said, you guys have a great case, but the issue is you're not a people. Mm -hmm. It's okay. a civil matter. So a person can sue a corporation or another person for injuries due to that person in civil court. Right. Only a nation can claim reparations against mm. another nation. Okay, okay. So okay. African Americans, oh, yeah. this is why we don't have reparations, people. Ah, okay, okay. Because yeah. we are, we've been labeled African Americans, yep. coloreds, yeah. Negroes, niggas, or niggers, whatever you want to call right, us. Right, right. Right? But we never have been an actual nation or people. Mm -hmm. We were tribes yep. from different countries in Africa were brought here, captured, yep. and then kidnapped and brought here, and then unenslaved. Yep. And we all thought we were free. Right. But look at the 14th Amendment. It says we are freeing the, or, 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 or the slavery is over for the African Americans, but only under the citizenship and authority of the American government. Right. Mm -hmm. So, Ash, I'm going to ask you, and it's Tashima, right? Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> so, I'm going to ask you both of you guys. If you kidnap somebody, right, mm -hmm. for three days, three years, or 300 years, yep. you kidnap them, they work for you in your house, your plantation, your, your factory, your warehouse, wherever, they work for you for free. Mm -hmm. And then one day you said, you know what? I'm gonna let you go for your enslavement. Your enslavement now is over. You don't have to work for me for free. You can go ahead and work out and build your family, build your dream, make a million dollars if you want. But you gotta still be under my authority. I know I kidnapped you three days ago, right. three years ago, three hundred years ago. Right. But I'll let you go work and you can become Oprah. You can become Jay-Z, you can become LeBron James. You can have all the money you want, mm -hmm. but you gotta do it under my authority. Is right. that person free? No. no. Just right. free from that real estate. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> free from your property. Right, right. <laughs> Definitely not free. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if, if your kidnapper still has you under their authority, right. how can you be free? Right. Mm -hmm. The American government kidnapped the Africans and brought us here to America. We're the descendants. Right. Mm -hmm. So therefore, mm -hmm. we're the descendants from the Africans that were kidnapped, and the American government is still the authority, and they were the kidnappers. Are we free? Right. So I want to ask you, in what ways are we still enslaved? Like, for, for your no, perspective. No, I'm not saying we're enslaved. We're unenslaved. Uh -huh. I'm not even going to say mental slavery and all that kind of stuff. No, that's not what I'm saying. Uh -huh. What I'm trying to say is we're enslavement ended, but we're still under the subjugation of our ki our ancestors' kidnappers. Okay. We are not a people. Mm -hmm. We are the race they determine us to be, African-Americans. What the hell is an African-American? Yeah. Yeah. 
We yeah. don't we don't call white people European Americans. Right. Right. Yeah. right? So why so 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 why is every black you see a continent American, mm -hmm. an African American? Mm -hmm. Right. But why is every white person you see an Italian American? Yeah. Or Polish American or Russian American or Mexican American or a Puerto Rican American or Dominican American? Why does everybody else have a nationality? Right. We're the only ones in America that don't have a nationality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And because we don't have a nationality and we haven't freed ourselves, yeah. mm -hmm. we're not free. We're not free until we all declare our freedom and yeah. say, you know what? Yes, we're here in America. I love America. I do mm -hmm. for the opportunity here. Mm -hmm. I don't love how America has treated our people and our ancestors. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying everybody go burn an American flag. I'm not saying that. Mm -hmm. You can be American, you can be a dual citizen of America, you can be all that, but we need to become a nation amongst ourselves. Definitely. Definitely. All right, cool. So hold, hold that thought. We're going to take right. a quick music break. <laughs> Uh, we'll be right back with the Ash Cash Show with Ash Cash and Mr. Shima Jones. I'm not crazy, yo. We are back, the Ash Cash Show, every Sunday, 1 p.m., WACR, 90.3 FM, New York, with Ash Cash and Mr. Shima Jones. Yes, it's always a classroom here. Yo, the, the, the <laughs> microphone, the room is on fire. We are... Woo, you turn, yo, bro, turned I'm turned up. <laughs> yo, and I'm, I got my all black that's what, on. That's what we do. I got my all black on. I'm ready, baby. <laughs> like, I'm ready. Yes, All right, yes, so, yes. so, so, so we, so we're, we're talking about reparations. Um, so, so, so how, how do, how do we create that unity? How do right, we create, right. Okay, know, so, 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 yeah, so, so to kind of round it out, you like, so why I brought the freedom thing up, right? Our freedom movement and our freedom in general, because you can't talk about reparations as you talk about actual freedom, right? You're, you're asking for something from someone you haven't even declared the main thing you need to declare, which is your independence, yep. right? So, and we need that freedom. So if and when, excuse me, when we rally together, right? Mm -hmm. And you think about the American Declaration of Independence, it was signed by 77 people, declared they were independent from Great Britain. Mm -hmm. And then that came into a movement. It doesn't take a million people to start, mm -hmm. yep. right? So our founders have laid down something since 1968, there are Blacks that have already declared their independence under the Republic of New Africa, it's called RNA, mm -hmm. under the red, black, and green flag. Mm -hmm. And that's the, the flag and the, and the torch that we have to carry in this generation is to say, we have to announce our, our independence, right? For the sake of the fact that we're not free. I just proved it, right? Mm -hmm. right? Somebody mm -hmm. just proved me, please. But I just proved it. Yep. So for me, right, so reason why I'm so excited about it because if you tell me, and I'm showing, I'm enlightened that, you know what? Logically, literally, I'm not free, then I gotta do something about it. Mm -hmm. Right, and what we can do about it is, and what I'm doing about it, right? So, and, and Ash is, and I know he's joining with me, is through our YMC movement, our YMC Community Coalition, I call it, which is like-minded individuals, any race, religion, creed does not matter, mm -hmm. right? Can go to joinymc.org. Mm -hmm. It's a simple email and name capture, so we can start unifying all groups. I don't care what other organization you got. Is I'm not trying to be the man, none of that. Mm -hmm. I'm, we have to have a platform for all of us to come together, create this conversation and actually join this declaration for our independence mm -hmm. and show people what that looks like. Because people know, what's that look like? I know it means I'm free. I know that, right? So that's first and foremost. Mm -hmm. But once we have enough people, it's called a plebiscite, basically. It's a petition. Mm -hmm. We have enough of us that say, hey, I raise my hand. I want to be free. Mm -hmm. When that happens, all it takes is for one nation out of the whole world, out of all nations, African nations, Caribbean nations, anywhere, Asian nations, if one nation recognizes us as mm -hmm. free people, we now can have a seat as an observer at the United Nations uh, in World Court. Wow, and okay. then we can bring our reparations issue to the World Court. Okay. So that's our steps to reparations. Mm -hmm. First thing is fact disclosure, which is what we're doing right now, disclose the facts. Second thing is plebiscite, which is basically done through a tribunal where we're gonna have a, a court session with Eric Garner's family, Trayvon Martin's family, Alpha Wright's family, Oscar Grant's family, and all these other cases of injustice, we're actually gonna hold the American government liable, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And we announce that, and we have Caribbean nations and African nations there to witness it, and then we all announce our independence, yep. and we get acknowledged by one nation, then we take that and we go to the World Court and the United Nations, and we fight for our reparations for financial reparations, for land, also our, our for, for therapy, for physical reparations, tax breaks, whatever it is that's due us, that they're outstanding. Yep. There, yep. There's nothing, if, if Native Americans, uh, 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 German Jews, um, Japanese Americans, or anyone else can get reparations because of human rights violations, I know that going well. Yes. Right. That we are we, we, we bleed the same red blood, our, yeah. our melanin our skin is just darker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And our hair might be a little more coarse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But other than that, we are people like anyone else and our human rights deserve to get the same kind of treatment as anyone else. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. And and so so, you know, real quick, what are what are some barriers you think that are in the way of that happening? Because cause the way you broke it down, it seems like 
it's a slam dunk. Like, yeah, I, like, like, why hasn't crazy. this happened though? Like, you know, like, what are some barriers that right. that are stopping this from happening? Well, well, the biggest barriers is is us being willing to unify first and foremost, right, around one cause, one thing. Okay. And so we're so divided. Well, I don't want to be the Republican of Africa. I don't want to be the South. Yo, let, let's just, right. let's, can we all agree on one thing that right. we want to be free? Right. right? I'm right. Methodist. I'm Protestant. I'm Islam. I don't eat pork. I ain't doing it. Right. Who cares? Right. Yeah, right. Like, right. no one, like, let's care about, let's put ourselves to the side for mm -hmm. one second yep. and think about all the blood, sweat, and tears fought by all our ancestors for the last 400 years yep. and just say, look, Jay just made it the clearest case possible that we're not free. Go yeah. Google everything I said. Go right. research it. Wiki it. Whatever you want to do. Right. It's facts that we're not free. Mm -hmm. So let's all come together around one cause that, you know what? Cool. We'll be Americans. We'll be whatever. We'll be whatever. But we're going to be a Republic of New Africa. And we got dual citizenship. You can be whatever you want to be. There's a lot of breakdown. I'm going to be here forever talking about it. Yeah. But the, the first and foremost thing what everyone understand is that all you have to do is declare your freedom. You all have the power of choice, mm -hmm. right? You all have the power of choice. But now you have to be willing to sacrifice also yep. for this cause. Mm -hmm. So you say barriers... There's going to be opposition from the American government. They're not going to just say, we release our, your authority. We want to give you guys land. Or It's no give, right? right. You take your freedom. Right. Mm -hmm. And the power we have, you talk about economic power. Yep. I'm not talking about just buy Black Fridays. I'm not talking about boycott one day. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about if we can get everyone to sacrifice their comfortability. Imagine the uncomfortability of our ancestors who were enslaved. Right. Of the ones who were in Jim Crow. Yep. The mm -hmm. ones who were deep in segregation. Imagine their uncomfortability, yep. right? So if, imagine if we decided that, you know what? We have some house Negroes, so to speak, those of us who have made it and are comfortable. Mm -hmm. And it's like, man, I don't want to shake things up. I've got corporate relationships. See, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm willing to sacrifice mine for freedom. Yep. Mm -hmm. Like, I'll give up any corporate relationship because for my people being free. Yep. It's really a lifestyle. Right. It's a lifestyle. Yep. And you and you have, though, right, because that's part of the story you know, that I know. Right. That, you know, you, you had put out a video that got half a million views in, like, two days and, and, and a big corporate... The company yeah. you were working for said, whoa, hold on. Right. What's all this black power stuff you're talking mm -hmm. about? I don't think you're going to rep, you know? So, right, so right. Yeah, the, 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 the CEO uh, of my former real estate company, a prominent property, Sotheby's International Realty, the world's leading luxury real estate company, sent me an email, I have it in writing, who said, I saw your video talking about the black community and you being a spokesperson. And although you're comfortable with that, I'm not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they asked me to resign. So, and, that, and that's cool. So when I, when I think about, but so to put it all in places like this, our power, right? To get freedom, and we want land, we want territory. I'm talking yeah. about an independent black government, the Republic mm -hmm. of New Africa, which there's already a declaration for, a creed for, we have a pledge of our flag. The elders already laid all the work down for us, mm -hmm. which is what I'm going to be disclosing to everybody through Join YMC. Mm -hmm. We're going to make, in this social age, we can rally our troops so fast yeah. in this social age where Marcus Garvey couldn't do that, Malcolm X couldn't do that yeah. mm -hmm. as fast as we can. We can organize faster than anyone else. Only around one thing is all I'm saying. Yep. Around independence and freedom for black people because we never got it. Yes, we were unenslaved, but we were not freed from our kidnappers. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's the whole thing. And we need our own government, our mm -hmm. own to be self-determined. Mm -hmm. It's, the, it's mm -hmm. the opportunity for a nation to be able to declare their own. Definitely. So how we can force anyone's hand in that is through our economic power. Blacks spend the most money of anyone here in America. Mm -hmm. If we really wanted freedom and we demanded freedom, and we all rallied together, even if 25% of us said, we're not going to spend $1 for a month. Yep. I'm talking about kids, private school, car notes, I'm talking about everything. Like, yep. nah, for a month, we're not going to spend $1. Yep. We can crumble this economy mm -hmm. and force their hand. If we wanted freedom bad enough. Right. Or we're just comfortable being the African Americans here in America. Mm -hmm. Right. The only ones that aren't a nation. Out of everybody in America, we are the only ones that are not recognized by the world as a nation. Mm -hmm. That's sad. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes, and it's just it goes going, going back to Harriet Tubman. She said, "I freed tons of slaves, and yeah. I could have freed more if they knew they were slaves." Right. And a lot of people don't really know. And you spoke about right. your enlightenment, and I think we all have to come to that space and that place in ourselves where we realize these things and we become right. conscious of those things because that's that's the truest form of freedom is being mentally free. Correct. And then once you are outside of that prison, you can then free yourself in the natural and in the earthly prisons that we all, you know, are dealing with. Right, right. Mm -hmm. absolutely. And, and, and again, we, and I like to keep it simple. I, I believe in KISS. Keep it simple, stupid. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? I'm not going to overcomplicate the point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All I'm saying is that free from enslavement is one thing. Mm -hmm. Freeing from somebody from enslavement. Yeah. But free from the authority of someone that kidnapped mm -hmm. you is a whole, a whole different, different thing. Yeah. Absolutely. We haven't had that freedom. Mm -hmm. And we deserve that freedom as people. Mm -hmm.
Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Jay, we appreciate you for coming out, man. Like, you know, I, yo, we need two hours for this, man. We're no, no, we gonna, no. we gonna have to have you come back. But talk to the people, tell the people where, where can they find you. All right. So yeah, first and foremost, anyone can just go to jmorrison.net or jmrrealestate.com, same site. Um, go to joinymc.org if you believe in this freedom movement, and let's let's rally together. And then next up and coming, I have a conference, Building Wealth Through Apartment Buildings, uh, my first elite real estate conference in Atlanta, Georgia, May 15th through 17th. And you guys can uh, go to jmorrisonlive.com to register for that conference. All right, brother. We appreciate you for coming yes. out, man. Thank this, you, thank this, you, this thank was you. This was very enlightening. I know the people got a lot of information from it, so definitely, you know, you, you're a friend to the room. You're a, forget friend. You're family to the room. So, you know, anytime uh, you need us. So uh, we're going we're gonna to take a, another music break, and then when we come back, we'll come back with the Ask Ash Cash section. Uh, this one is a, is, is a special song because, we, we, you know, we lost, um, you know, Johnny Kemp. Yes. Over over the weekend, and yes. he and he is a is a is a uh, call of my Yes, it's so interesting. My mom, she actually um, saved him from a fire one day. Oh, wow! His wow. brown phone was on fire, and she was banging. On, she really really liked him. Yeah, obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. she was banging on the door, waking <laughs> him up, and he got out. Wow. So to hear about him, it brought memories not only you know of seeing him in Harlem as a young child, but also my mom. So wow! Yeah, wow. definitely a loss. So rest in peace, Johnny Kemp. Just got paid Friday night. We'll be back to Ash Cash Show, WHCR 90.3 FM, New York. Yo, yo, good, yo. yo, yo I was like, yo, what happened, though? Yo, yo. Huh, really? That was awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good, good stuff, man. You already know. Yeah, you already know. Yeah, Whatever yeah. you need, ready, you know. We need like a two, three hour panel. Nah, facts. Man. That's a fact, bro. We need to. Do you have any like 